Hello everyone, my name is Rob Pigarita and I'm a Principal Specialist Solutions Architect focusing on Microsoft workloads on AWS. And I'm here today in this video to introduce you to Amazon FSx for Windows File Server and using continuous available shares for availability in your workloads. As we go through today, we're going to take a quick look at the two different options for deploying Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, a little bit about the differences of those, show you the architecture of the two of them and why you may want to use the multi-AZ implementation, and then a feature that you can take advantage of in the multi-availability zone deployment that will allow you to be a little bit more resilient for your SQL Server workloads during failover between the two availability zones. So let's take a look here at the two different file system deployment options that are available in Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. With our single AZ deployment, we're still going to have continuously monitored and addressed hardware failures for you as the customer. You no longer have to worry about the infrastructure that runs your file servers. So if you're not familiar with what Amazon FSx for Windows File Server does, it presents SMB and SIF shares to your users without you having to administer the actual infrastructure of, say, some EC2 instances running a file service on them. So you're going to be able to take advantage of AWS monitoring and taking care of that infrastructure for you to address anything like hardware failures that may happen or making sure that we take care of any type of patching and implementation workloads. On top of that, we're also going to make sure that your workloads are replicated within the availability zone for that single AZ. This is going to allow you to help be a little bit more resilient within that availability zone for presenting your file shares. If you have a workload that is a little bit more sensitive to downtime and maybe your production workload, you may look to our multi-availability zone or multi-AZ deployment. It's going to have the same features as the single AZ as far as continually monitor and address hardware failures and replicating data within the availability zone. But now we're also going to add on replication of data across availability zones within AWS to help you be more resilient. We're also going to help you with automatic failovers across those availability zones. So in the case where one availability zone is unavailable, the second availability zone will be able to take over that workload. Let's take a look at the infrastructure that makes this up. So here we see the single AZ file system architecture. We covered the difference between the two of them, but I wanted to show you real quickly what that infrastructure looks like in kind of a general layout. Here we have FSx deployed into our single availability zone, in which case this is a durable file system, but not highly available as it's only deployed into one availability zone. So if there was impact to this availability zone, you would not have access to it from availability zone 2 or your on-premises networks any longer as it would only be in this one availability zone. We're going to spend some time here looking at the multi-AZ file system because that's where we're going to really be leveraging our continuously available shares that we're here to introduce you to today and assure you can set up. In our multi-AZ file system architecture, you can see that we have redundant infrastructure deployed across two availability zones to make your Windows file server available for FSx. This is going to allow you to have access again from multiple availability zones and your on-premise networks to your Amazon FSx file share. But in case there's an issue in availability zone one, you would still have access to the file system as it's available in availability zone two and still be accessible from your on-premises networks. Now, failovers don't only happen because of issues in availability zones. When there are patching that needs to happen to the underlying infrastructure, or if there are hardware failures, you're going to see a failover from availability zone 1 to availability zone 2, or vice versa. And that's where a continuously available share can help you to alleviate any impact to your application that may be sensitive to a failover. If you're unfamiliar with what a continuously available share is, it is a feature in Microsoft Windows Server that enables a file share to remain available to you, the clients, even when a node in the cluster fails. So during one of those patching events or during a unexpected hardware issue, this is going to allow the share to be available to you. This file share being set up as continuous available helps to make things transparent for the failover and is really relevant for organizations that require highly available file shares for critical applications. Now, a continuously available share may not be appropriate for all workloads and therefore it is not enabled by default on Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. There is a minimum performance impact that occurs for leveraging a continuous available file share and that is why it's not enabled by default because really there are specific workloads that are going to benefit from this 
more so than just your traditional file access for writing files and reading files from an SMB file system. So if you have an application or you have standard users that are going to just read files and write files to this FSX share, you may not need continuously available enabled for this as being able to click save again on a file or have your application do a retry is going to be successful and not have issues. In the case of usage for an application like SQL Server, where you have long lived locks on files to be read and written to, you may need to have continuously available shares enabled in order to alleviate that strain on your application from the failover process from either maintenances or from hardware issues within the availability zone. So in the demo, we're going to see how to enable or disable a continuously available share so that you can take advantage of this feature on your applications where needed. So let's go ahead and take a look into our instance and see how we're going to configure a share to be continuously available. And so what we're going to do here is now that we're in my PowerShell on a server, this server is joined to the domain where my FSX file share exists. And what we're going to do is we're going to use PowerShell to administer our FSX file system. So in order to do so, we can either connect to our FSX endpoint, which is a um, CLI endpoint that you can use for PowerShell to connect to this and run commands against our file service. Or we can use this invoke command and give it the name of our endpoint and tell it we want to run in the FSX remote admin space. And we can run script blocks against this to accomplish different administration tasks, such as creating shares, getting the name and description of shares, or changing the configuration of the share. So in this case, I'm running a command or have run a command that is going to get the list of the FSX shares that are within my file system. And I'm going to ask for the name of those, the description, and if they're continuously available. Now, we can see here that my default share is configured as not being continuously available. As I mentioned previously, we may not want to have this enabled as continuously available for all workloads. So by default, it is set to false for continuous, being continuously available. Now, for this instance, I'm going to be running a SQL workload on this default share, and I would like it to be continuously available. I do not have to go back and create a new share and make that continuously available in order to have the share that I want. I can just take the default share and modify that and say, make this continuously available. But as you can see, you also have the option to create multiple shares, make some of those truly continuously available, or set them to false and have them not be continuously available. So now I'm going to run a command against this instance as well to say, change my configuration of the share, share, to continuously available to be true. Now, when I run this, it's going to change the configuration of the share to make this continuously available. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter here. It's going to connect to my PowerShell remote endpoint. It's going to ask me and say, do I want to modify the target and share? And yes, I do, because I want to make that continuously available. And I click yes, and now it has gone through and then just changed my share from being false on the continuously available to true. So I'll run the same command that I ran earlier to get the listing of those FSX SMB shares. And the output from this instead is going to show now that my default share is continuously available. So it's very simple to change the configuration of a share from not being continuously available to be continuously available. And even if I notice that I don't need this any longer, I can change it back from being continuously available to not continuously available by running the same command here that I ran before, but sending that again to false, and it will flip that back for you. So that's it today. I just wanted to show you real quickly the single AZ, the multi-AZ deployment, and when you might use a continuously available share with your Amazon FSX Windows workloads to help you reduce the downtime within your environment on a failover. Thanks for watching the video. I appreciate your time.